So today it's a, my joy to invite Santosh and come and share word in word of God to us. Let's welcome Santosh. So good to be back here. I am so overjoyed with the uh, with the gratitude uh, because I still remember nine years back when Gigi and I celebrated our silver jubilee of our marriage. This was happened here. We had a special special meal that day also. So when we are hearing about today's special celebration, we were looking at each other. So, church, thank you so much. It has been a great privilege to to come in front of you after after many years. Now it is almost we just celebrated our thirty fourth anniversary two days back. So, <laughs> you know, it's like nine years before I no no I came here a couple of times. Otherwise, anyway, so nice to see some of the familiar faces, and also happy to see so many other faces. Um, when Vijay asked me, I, I, I happen to be here in Kochi uh, in connection with the Gideon's work. I will talk about it later. And uh, so I asked her whether will I be able to come and share about Gideon. She said, also share the word. I said, okay, you know, when I, whenever I get such calls, I never say no because it's also a time for me to learn and sit in the, in the footstool of the Lord and, and, and learn from him with what to talk and what to share with the with other children of God. So until yesterday evening, I was asking, Lord, what should I do? What should I share? Nothing came, but late in the evening before I sleep, he gave me a sentence and that's what I'm going to share with you. It is quite fresh. It is not, it's in complement to, to whatever we do. We are here as a community of grace. So grace is our focus, the Lord's grace. But there are certain things the Lord wants us to not to forget certain things because the, the cost he paid for us is so huge which is beyond our understanding but at the same time he also want us to be focused on some certain things so that this walk with him will be really fruitful so i'm going to to uh, use this one uh, this the theme for today is stay awake stay awake so I know you're all staying awake that this should be should is a subject for today or is it just you are talking about us but no I'm not talking about uh, any individuals here but I'm talking about a community of children who are walking together with the Lord so this is the theme this is the place I took this uh, thing from mark 13 13, uh, 35 to 36. Therefore, so he's talking a lot of things and finally he's concluding it saying, therefore, stay awake for you do not know when the master of the house will come. In the evening or at the midnight or when the roaster crows or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. This is These are some of your last instructions to your apostles. You are, you are so careful about them. And even in, the, your, in your high priestly prayer, you prayed, no, no one was missed except that one. But I protected everyone. Lord, you always want to protect each one of us. You are so careful about each one of us. Even today, we heard about your faithfulness from many people, how faithful and how careful you are on each and every small things in our life, Lord. So Lord, when we are asking us to do something, let us do it without questioning you, without questioning your intention, because your intention is to take us home safely, Lord. We know you are going to come soon. So let us be aware. Let us be expectant about your second coming to take us all home, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
so um, whenever we are talking about uh, a, a portion from bible we should know what is the context why jesus said when he said about this the first thing was that jesus was giving you know he he, he foretells the future which is going to happen because the the disciples of jesus came and asked lord what when all these things are going to happen what is the you know give give us a clue when this is going to happen you know so that is the time jesus started talking about these things that uh, you know he, he he tell this to his close disciples and they recorded it for his close children like us so this is what how we are going to uh, to do this so he was getting jesus was getting prepared his disciples before he was leaving because uh, this happened this conversation happened just before the last passover meal he had with his disciples so he was telling something very important you know whenever we leave home we tell the children hey get it this done you know because that's the most important thing you wanted to tell that just before you are stepping out of your door you tell be prepared be prepared to to uh, you know be ready with this or you do this so this is the most important thing so he uses the different kind of metaphor and uh, also the parables because the kingdom of god cannot be expressed in human language it can only be told in certain ways it is like this it is like that and all so a lot of metaphors are there about you know again keeping awake it's a, that's also a metaphor so it 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 reveals deeper truths of the the kingdom of god we can't understand until we reach there what where are we going to see the no eyes have seen no you know no ear has heard exactly that's that's the way the the, the kingdom of god works and we even a person with a, so much of maturity will understand only a little of the kingdom of god that's why the use of metaphors and also the the parables so uh, jesus said i am the true wine so somebody, somebody was encouraging us with the word of wine so there are you know the meaning now he is talking about a wine who is useless but jesus was talking about a wine who he has chosen or he himself is portraying himself as a wine and uh, we are the we are the branches which gives us some knowledge about okay jesus is the wine that means we are not really useless and we are the branches so whatever jesus have we also have and or we will be nourished from the wine the branches will be nourished from the from the wine so that is that's a that's a metaphor which is uh, which is uh, which is used so he also said i am the bread of life normal person cannot understand what jesus is talking he is the bread of life but he is the one who gives life then that bread which which gives life to a body so he is the one who gives life to us that is that is what he mean by and he also say i am the good shepherd so we know about the shepherding and the shepherds and all those things so oh so he is the one who is with a a big protecting stick and he is the one who is leading us into eternity so he is a good shepherd who gives his life to his sheep so he is uh, also telling when he say he is a shepherd at least we understand at least all the at least the, the shepherds good shepherds will understand who he is and the next one is he is the light he is the light so we know the importance of light in the darkness we need light to move on we need light for directions we need light for everything so when we see when we understand that he is light say yes he is beyond something which we uh, we cannot uh, we can imagine so the next one is this metaphor which say stay awake it is not that uh, you know uh, to stay awake all night to receive jesus it's a metaphor used to be stay alert in your spiritual life always be aware about that uh, something is going to happen something is going to happen any time we don't know but any time so jesus is saying stay 
awake. So that is what uh, I, I wanted to, to share this today. So the, the metaphors and the parables are a little different with the most, mostly you uses both of this to make uh, his uh, disciples educate. And I used to wonder why all these stories were told for us after 20th, 20 centuries. Uh, even last week I was sharing in my church that we are so lucky people that we are living in the New Testament age where we are really expecting Jesus in his second coming. Those people who are in the, in the, in the Old Testament age, I really pity them because they really didn't understand the depth of the truth of the kingdom of God. But we are so lucky to have, and you have been fed every week with, a, with a, that expectation. And I, I would say you are, we are blessed people because we are now really, really expecting. So there are long descriptions which are parables, and Jesus was always talking in parables and in, in metaphors. Uh, it is in Mark 4, 11 and 12, it said, um, to you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God, but for those outside, everything in parables, so that they may intend to see, but not perceive, and may indeed hear, but not understand. So this is the Lord's thing, and we I really don't have any justification or any explanation for that, but that's what I said. We are lucky. We are so blessed people that we have been given the the luck to, or the, the 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 grace. I would say luck. The grace to know the truth of His kingdom. So, gracious people, graceful people, let us try to understand what uh, what the Lord was is trying to tell the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom of God, we, we, we have seen many uh, phrases, kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven. And I'm not going to go into the details, but the kingdom of God is the ultimate everlasting reign of God. It's a spiritual kingdom. This is our destination. So this world, this place where we are now today, this is our temporary resting place, right? So like... Uh, Mutu brother was sharing, he got a new resting place for some days. So after some time, you know, he may get a better place, <laughs> right? So uh, this is a place where we are there for some time, but we know that we have to move. This is not our permanent place. So our permanent place, permanent place is an everlasting place. It's a spiritual kingdom where the, the reign of God is there and the light of the lamp is going to light us up. And there will be no boring. I used to wonder how, how this will be, you know. So I used to wonder how uh, me and Gigi will be there in that place. Because Jesus said, there's no husband and wife there. And all will be children of God. And think, I used to wonder how that will be. How that, that eternal kingdom of God where we are going to be permanently stay. And I also used to remember that, you know, this year, that 50, 60, 100 years of our life is such a short period compared to the everlasting, everlasting life, you know. We cannot even put, I mean, even if you put a long line from the, the end of this hall to the air, our time is like a, a dot in that whole line. So that's a, that is the way I could express it, but it is even, the line is even longer that we cannot even measure. So we are going to live a long, 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 long life in eternity. So we should be prepared, right? Because if you miss it, it's going to be a terrible miss. So, the kingdom of God is expressed in many times, in many ways. Jesus himself said, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were on this world, my servants would have, would have been fighting that I might not be delivered onto, uh, onto Jews. This, this is, he was talking uh, with, the, with the pilot and uh, he was sharing that I'm not of this world. I'm not really bothered about this world. Many times we were going through uh, tribulations and, and, and pain and all. I said, Lord, are you not hearing me? Are you not listening to me? Do you not seeing me? You know, but many times I felt myself in, the, in my, even my tribulations, like uh, what Vijay mentioned about some 
kind of a persecutions or things like that, even from, from my own family members, Lord sometimes used to feel like ignoring it. He doesn't really feel like, okay, oh, you have a problem, right? I should come and sort it out right now. So no, 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 wait. This is always for a very, very short time. So he's preparing us. He's preparing us to take those, those tribulations or those persecutions because that produces endurance and that produces this, you know, the, the, the faith and stuff like that. So um, that is the reason sometimes your prayers are not answered immediately. There are prayers which are answered immediately. And, uh, you know, at that time, when I, 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 uh, my baptism was 20 years back in 2004, September 3rd, and I was in Bahrain, working in Bahrain. And two years I was wrestling with God. Two years before that period, I was wrestling with God because I was, I was in a different faith and I wanted to prove that my faith, faith is superior to any other faith. But finally I had to surrender. So, that time I used to... Uh, uh, when I was when I was surrendering to to Lord, even I did not understand what I was really doing, but I knew that this is the truth, and I should I should I should surrender. But even from there onward, certain prayer I I was not very sure. Can I pray for a parking? How many of you pray for parking? Great. You can, and some some of those prayers will be quickly answered, right? But some of the prayers. Now I have a prayer for 20 years. Some of the people who are close, no, close to me know, what is that prayer? It is still not answered. But uh, so sometimes you ask, Lord, why you are giving tick marks to some of the prayers and some of the prayers which are bigger prayers and important prayers are not answered. But Lord says, I, my kingdom is not of this world. So he is not really worried about a bit of tribulations and pains you are going through right now because he allows it to happen. I want to repeat, he allows it to happen in your life to make you a better child of God. So the kingdom of God is focused on an eternity. It is focused on spiritual, uh, be, being a spiritual thing. So the kingdom of God is being, uh, you know, given with uh, so many, uh, you know, uh, things like, it is like a grain of of mustard seed, this is for me. <laughs> it's a grain of mustard. It's such a small thing, starting like a small thing, but it slowly grows and becomes the biggest tree. Like it is like that, or it is like uh, the dove and things like that, uh, dove and things like that. So uh, another thing is, it's a good metaphor. Is that uh, it's a treasure hidden in a field. A treasure hidden in a field. So once you understand the value of that treasure, you need not. If you are a, if you are the seller of uh, of some um, uh, precious uh, diamonds and all, you will know the preciousness of that diamond. It may be costing maybe hundred times than your entire wealth. So that is when you understand the the importance of that that treasure. Then you go and sell everything else, and you go and buy it, because you don't care. What else you lose because you know the importance of the treasure you are going to get. You are saying I am only making a small investment even with all my wealth being sold off, being taken away. But the one thing what you are going to get is much, 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 much and so many much more than what you lose. That is the reason sometimes we are happy to lose certain things for the Lord. Right? We, sometimes we gladly say, yes, I'm persecuted. I'm happy about that. Paul was telling, I, I was, I'm rejoicing because I could take some of the things which the Lord was, was taking. So this is why, that, that's the attitude. So that is why the, it's a treasure hidden in a field. And we sell all those. We surrender all those we have or we think what we have is sold and we go and buy the treasure and that is how the kingdom of God is. And now, kingdom of God and of course we, we accept the Lord, we become children of God, but how we inherit it in a, in a rightful way, this is what, this is again the Bible teaches the, the following things. 
the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So that means whatever you do humanly cannot take you to heaven. So this is a fundamental truth about the kingdom of heaven. So if you wanted to, to inherit the kingdom of heaven, you should do something more than your flesh and your blood can do for you. So the next thing is, so the kingdom of God is, is, a, is, a, is not a matter of eating and drinking. So we are not talking about the biryani today, but we are talking about the, the heaven, uh, the, the worldly pleasures we are enjoying. So the kingdom of heaven is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of the righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So it is in a different level. It's in a different dimension. So when you're talking about dimensions, you know, when Jesus was taken to heaven, people say the cloud came and, you know, covered him and he disappeared. In fact, my understanding is that he moved from these three, four dimensions of this world into different dimensions so that he was disappeared. He's still there, but in that dimension we cannot see him. So that's exactly the thing say that the kingdom of heaven is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. We need to experience it. The, 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 the righteousness and the peace and the joy of the Holy Spirit. We have to experience it. We don't see it, but we experience it. Right? When the heavenly peace, when in the, in the midst of all the problems, I, I'm sure most of you experience this as children of God. When the heavenly peace come upon you, you get into that kind of a different dimension and then you experience the care of God. I also happen to experience such things. And also another thing, Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The, the, the big uh, um, discussion with the Nicodemus, where Jesus was, Nicodemus was a teacher of the law, could not understand the, the truth of the kingdom of God. And he said, you have to be born again. The body is born of a body and the spirit is born, born, should be born of a spirit. So you should be born again on Holy Spirit so that you can inherit the, the, the kingdom of God. So how should we prepare? What Jesus was mentioning when we prepare our eternal preparation for our eternal whore, for our eternal uh, eternal life. Uh, one thing he said is that in, in, in Colossians, Paul is talking, set your minds on things that are above, not on the things that are on earth. So the awareness about this, that okay, we are here, we have a job, we have a family, we have so many things on earth, but there is one day we are going to leave all those things and we are going to take off. So our ultimate aim should be our destination. So we get in a train and we want to go to New Delhi. So the train goes to one station, the next station, we look at it and say, yeah, a station is there. Then slowly it reaches a station nearby and suddenly you see, oh, uh, this is Taj Mahal, let me get down here and see Taj Mahal. The train will go. Okay, you can always say I can take the next train. But the, the point is that you should not forget your destination. There are so many things around us which will tempt us to, to get out of the, our, our aim and the, you know, um, mingle there so that we don't really continue our, our, our journey. But what the Lord reminds us is that be mindful of the things, be mindful of your destination. You are going to go to a place and you should not be derailed or you should not be, you know, what is called taking break of journey. That is what, uh, what the Lord is telling. The second thing is that uh, um, as we, uh, the, again, uh, Second uh, Corinthians, we say, as we look into the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. 
So, as we said, you know, certain things which is in another dimension, we don't see it, but we know it. That is why we should be alert. And when things of this world, which we see, look so beautiful, you know, we tempt to forget about our destination and jump into that thing. So be alert. Be always mindful. Be aware that that is not our destination. So that is what we see are transient. All these things will go away and we are going to get into an eternity. So in that eternity, that is our destination. So we should always have that kind of a, uh, of a thinking in the back of our mind as children of God that this is not the destination. The next one is not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of not everyone who, who says to me, Lord, Lord, will uh, enter in the kingdom of heaven, but one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. There's another warning to them. Just being a, a, namesake, a namesake Christian won't make you go to heaven. Many people think that way. Going to church will take you to heaven. No. Going to or doing some, some religious things will, will take you to heaven. Unfortunately not. But we need to do certain things which the will of my father is demonstrated. So, and then it says, uh, and, the, and the word of God says, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteous, righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So sometimes you may be persecuted, sometimes you may have difficulties, but who suffer it for the kingdom of God are the people who are going to, 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 to stay until the last uh, you know, test. There are so many tests because, you know, uh, okay, the children are not here, but those people, I mean, we all brought a lot of tests to pass and then got a degree or get a job and things like that, you know. So as the tests are getting tougher, the rewards are going to be bigger. So an IAS a test is going to be much tougher than a degree exam, right? So because once you pass the IAS, then you get a bigger reward. So that's that, that's the way. So the persecution is one of the tests we, which we need to endure and especially these days, these are the days of persecution and then we need, to, we need to endure it because of the righteousness. And another thing is, watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. Temptation is a, is a thing which is a reality in this life. Adam and Eve were tempted, right? So what about our ordinary people like us? They were the chosen uh, children of God was created by the image of God and even those who are tempted so we are no superior than Adam or Eve, right? So temptation is there but we need to watch and pray so this, and again the spirit is willing but the, the flesh is weak. So that's the reason we should be keep, we should be awake. So that is why I wanted to conclude it with stay awake. What really God wants us to be awake. Jesus wants us to be awake. It is the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took the lambs and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish. Other five were, they were wise. Brothers and sisters, we live in grace. So we should not abuse grace. This is one important thing I wanted you to know. The grace is not for, it's not a license to do sin or it is not license to justify yourself. Okay, Jesus has taken it all. So what for? I can do anything, right? Some people think that way. No. That should be a spiritual wiseness in, our, in us. All the ten virgins were waiting for the bridegroom, right? All the ten virgins were waiting. But only five of them were wise. So we have a lot of believers in the, in, the, in, the, in the Christian world, in the Christian side. But some people say, let us, let us take a chance. Let us do something else. Let us do something for our sake. Let us, you know, do something to... to, to to save some money or you know some fame or whatever it is but the five wise 
virgins were awake awake in the sense that they were they knew the bridegroom is going to come some day sometime because he said he will come the bridegroom said i am going to come but he did not say exactly exact time because we are so see, we are so smart people that say if jesus is coming at 4 o'clock in the morning we put up alarm at 3:30 and we sleep 3:30 we all get up and then wash and everything lord we are waiting for you oh, for whole night you have not sleeping he knows our nature you know so that's that's why our bridegroom did not tell the time he is going to come because he wants us to be awake he wants us to be alert he wants us to be expectant about his coming only those people who who completely trust in the lord are expecting that one day he is going to come doesn't care many people think oh it is 2000 years now christians are saying jesus will come jesus. where is he where is he there are so many people who are asking so many people who stop it in the middle and then get into the 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 worldly things say that enough is enough so much of waiting but the, the wise people will continue to wait until he comes because he is a faithful god he don't say any what is it called the uh, the words which are not meaningful he's going to if he say he will come he will surely come we always say maybe the the sun will not rise tomorrow but i am sure jesus is going to come because he said he will come so be very expectant and be wise the spiritual children of god be wise that he is going to come one day the second thing is uh he said again saying in 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 parables stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning stay dressed stay dressed and let your lamps keep burning and be like men who are waiting for their master to come uh, come home from the wedding feast so that they may open the door to him at once and he comes and, and knocks when the bridegroom comes and knocks immediately the door is opened those people who are in waiting will enter the doors will be closed other people will come and say lord 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 open for me open for us we are also waiting for you and what the lord will say i don't know you so be alert so you should always be ready to receive any time even this moment if the lord comes that's going to be a trumpet call and so many chairs will be empty in this hall so be ready and expect and that is what is what we what you mean by kevik blessed are those who servants who the ma- master finds awake when the master finds awake when he comes so that is the kind of an alertness we need to have in our church in everywhere we go whatever we do whatever we do i heard this i don't know whether it's true or not that in the american airlines in the old days the two pilots were chosen one should be a saved person so that if god if jesus comes one he will disappear right and some, somebody is should be there to to land the flight because some of the non believers are also there right so you should always be awake and you should always be alert alerted and you should always have the thing in the mind what if the lord comes right now so and the third uh, and the third one is that the servant who know his master's master's will but did not get ready or act according to his will will receive a severe beating or severe punishment so those people the people like us who knows that jesus is going to come is going to take us and if we are not awake then we will have a bitter thing because we will be crying outside the door saying lord open this for us so jesus is saying what i say to you and this is one one sentence i underlined that i say to all jesus said to his disciples said what i say to you i say to 
all my children, all my church, all my members, that stay awake. May God bless you with this, uh, this uh, thing. I have a little bit more responsibility to do um, about the Gideons. Um, as, uh, thank you so much for this, uh, you know, this opportunity in short notice. I'm a member of this, uh, the Commission Churches and, uh, you know, on a broader way, I'm also part of this church. So it's, it's, my, it's my honor to come and present uh, about the Gideons. Uh, let me uh, start with uh, one or two testimonies. Uh, uh, let me, let me uh, just uh, a couple of things before. I'm currently on a travel from the south of Kerala to the north. Today is the, or oh, today is, today I'm not traveling, but I completed 38 days traveling to different places. Gideons are in different, you know, grouped in different places in Kerala, in hundred and places from the southmost to the northmost place. So I'm traveling. So this travel will be over by uh, mid of May. So every five days I'm traveling. Sunday and Monday I'm taking a rest days so that I could travel further, you know. So these testimonies are, I collected recently. So these are quite fresh testimonies uh, for me. This person, his name is Mr. Sakaria. He's a pastor in a church, in a Pentecostal church near Anchal in, in, in Kolam district. This man uh, is from a communist background. He believed there is no God. He was a, a what is called, he lived in the physical world and he said there is no God. But uh, in 1996, he was in Kasargod, which is the northmost part of Kerala. And uh, some fear was coming to him. The fear was not going. Even though he didn't, he didn't believe in, in God or even demons, he was not even he was not uh, you know he was feeling so much of afraid that's the time there was a Gideon Bible in uh, this is a Gideon Bible if you didn't see such a thing with a with a logo here this is the this is a port and then there is a this is the fire you know you know the first uh, uh, judges uh, where the Gideon story is that the the port and the and the and the fire so he saw this was lying um, there and he just took it and, and started seeing and he was convicted of his sins and he's convicted of, you know, the presence of God and he came into the, the no saving knowledge of Jesus through this book which was laying idle in his friend's house. And currently the good news is he's a pastor serving in one of the Christian uh, you know churches and this is uh, uh, Reverend S.K. Vijay Kumar he is from Puthiya Kulangara and Nedubangad in Trivandrum district he is a vicar he is a priest in uh, the CSI church and his story is also a little different he was from a very strong um, faith another faith and then he uh, uh, he was uh, you know he was hating the Christians. He was hating the Christians and also this book that he, once he got one of this, he teared off all these pages and he used uh, the cover of the book to protect him from the rain. <laughs> so only the cover he used and he walked like that. But once he read the, the good news, he read about Jesus. He came to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Currently he, he is serving in a CSA Church in, in Trivandrum District. And this lady, uh, her name is Shanda Kumari. He's a retired, she, she's a retired government servant in uh, Vijinjam, which is uh, close to Trivandrum. And uh, they were worshipping some other gods and things like that. And uh, when her, her husband died, again the fear gripped her. She was crying out loud and things like that. She had three children. So, what she said is that, you know, the, the gods which, or, or, or demons which they were worshipping started attacking her and things like that, whatever. So, she could not sleep well and she lost her peace and she was, uh, you know, devastated. And there was, a, there was a Gideon Bible brought by some of her children, one of the three children brought from the school. It was such rejected and he said it was thrown into the pit. It was there dirty. 
one day she felt like taking that word of god and reading it and once she read it peace came to her that sunday she looked for a, a church and she went into the church she went to a church and couple of months she was persecuted by her brothers and you know even her children were asked to put uh, sand into the food she is eating so that she won't eat anything and things that she was persecuted but slowly the children understood the truth also and all the three children also came into the into the saving knowledge and one of the one of her child is a pastor in a church another uh, son is in abu dhabi and the third one is a close friend uh, is uh, it's a daughter married to one of the gideon uh, area directors in trivandrum and they are also serving the lord so the word of god has such a power that uh, in hebrews 4 12 says it it penetrates into your innermost being and it makes you aware about the, the the knowledge of god so this is what the gideons do from for the last 120 years and uh, you you know about the gideons you know that it is one of the oldest evangelical organizations founded in usa 125 years back and now it is uh, spread over 199 countries also in india it started in 1965 and we have something like 25000 members all across this country in 100, 1250 places out of which 102 104 are in kerala but in the other parts of the world so we used to distribute the word of god we used to sow the seeds so that at certain times it will come up it may it, the, the 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 seed which we sow may not quickly get uh, you know uh, nurtured or or grow up it takes sometimes it takes so much of time one of my friend who is in palakkad uh, his name is shanmugam and uh, he was a navy uh, employee he is a na- uh, sailor or something he kept that book in his uh, that box for 25 years but when finally it was time he opened the the, the book and he accepted jesus so we are sowing the seed and uh, how we are sowing the seed is through generous contribution from each one of us this is an evangelical activity which is uninterrupted for the last uh, 120 years and uh, last 10 years where we in india we have the persecution we distributed the maximum number of uh, new testament even in the last year we distributed like 10 million in 25 languages so this is the time for you to to sponsor some seeds and i can assure you from my own experience my own testimony this is worth spending worth investing so each of this uh, this new testament normally we distribute the new testament because the good news is here and secondly we don't have the the budget to print this full bibles and distribute like 10 million every year to to india so we are also short of you know budget and things like that so we always come to the church for two three things one is for prayer so may i request uh, the, the the community of grace to pray for us every week because we are also undergoing tremendous persecution and uh, things like that we can't distribute bibles like we used to do before in schools and colleges wherever we start people start gathering and questioning us so pray for us the second one is we want some members we want some so so right the people who are sowing the seed we want some people so whoever is interested come to us it's a simple ministry you raise the money print bible distribute simple and the bible will do the rest and once a person comes to know uh, he he knows something he'll come and say community of grace or oh, christian he'll come and ask uh, pastor can you explain to me about this how can i get saved so please join the gideon ministry it's a family ministry it's a very blessed ministry it's a rewarding ministry also the last 20 years gigi and i we 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 got a lot of blessing from the lord through this ministry by 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 being part of this ministry the third one is of course your generous heart to print more because each of this bible each of this new testament is sponsored by you and you know how much it cost only 40 rupees and in the us i used to say 1 dollar you can print two new testament they use 1 dollar two new testament amazing and if one of the person gets saved through reading this thing the credit goes to you by just investing 40 rupees so i, I don't say that you only invest 40 rupees multiples of 40 rupees whatever you want 
you can invest and you say oh sorry we are uh, we only do google pay and all we have the google pay so maybe please come and meet me or gigi and uh, donate whatever you have this is going to be an investment into the kingdom whatever we invest here we leave it here and go but this kind of investment we do is for eternity so i i urge you to and i humbly request you as a as a member of uh, the church to to contribute as much as you want because we wanted to distribute more word to the world thank you so much for this time god bless you thank you thank you santosh and gigi church shall we pray for them because this is a wonderful ministry in fact uh, he only showed uh, three testimonies there are so many testimonies of how people are just blessed by having a copy of gideon's bible and how they came to know this amazing god who loves us so much okay so and as uh, santosh said previously it was so easy for them There's, they just used to go to schools and colleges they used to give permission and they can now in this current environment it's just not easy in fact some of the stalls some of the places gideon stalls was burnt and bibles were burnt there's a lot of persecution so we really must uh, pray pray for this come ji ji then uh, let's reach out our hands and uh, just pray for this ministry and uh, just ask god that how can we partner with this amazing work that they are doing maybe we can become one of the gideons or maybe we can contribute and okay father we thank you thank you lord for this beautiful sunday morning thank you for the reminder that you have given us lord that your awesome power your majesty and yet you love us so much you love us and the love which we can't comprehend and that kind of love lord lord you put deposited in our hearts help us help us that will constantly lord be reminded of this great love that will not allow us to sleep this love will compel us the way paul wrote love compels us to share this wonderful news this wonderful news that so many people who are not aware of this lord i pray that we will not be living lives here just for ourselves but lord we'll be living lives to see how you can use us lord to allow this love to flow and touch people's lives whom you bring across our lives lord thank you thank you for the great reminder that you've given us that you want us to stay awake at all times because lord jesus you are going to come and establish your reign and rule here and we get an opportunity to reign along with you this is what your word says and help us to stay prepared at all times lord to await your coming and pray that we'll keep doing your will and your will for our lives is to see how people come to know you at this time i really want to thank you for bringing santosh and gigi lord in our midst thank you for the word that he shared and also thank you for the ministry that they are doing lord that given him a huge responsibility as he handles this gideons uh, activities in kerala i pray continue to strengthen him and uh, may your head of production be around them lord bless the ministry and i pray that through their ministry many many people who don't know you lord will have an opportunity lord to lay their hands on the bible this word of god which is being made available to them so free that they will read and come to know you help us as your people lord get alongside this ministry partner with them and contribute and do what lord you lord inspire us to do so you want to entrust them and their ministry into your hands protect them from all kinds of persecution in the midst of persecution i pray that they'll have opportunities to continue lord to spread this good news and uh, thank you once again for bringing them here lord in the time that we have 
during lunch break that we'll be able to so lord spend time with them get to know lord in what ways we can uh, support this ministry we submit them into your hands and now may the grace of our lord jesus christ and the unconditional overwhelming love of the father and the ever dwelling presence of the holy spirit be with us always enabling us to stay awake and doing the will of the father wherever you have placed us amen